Good day. You are welcome to my channel. This is Kevin Davis Accounting. So today I'd like us to look at the conceptual framework. Framework for financial reporting. Now, the conceptual framework is a theory that was developed by the International Accounting Standard Board um, as a guide or as a direction to accountants on how to present the financial statements or the financial reports. Therefore, this conceptual framework was brought about by the ISB um, and the ISB is the International Accounting Standards Board. So sometimes you are going to find that they are going to call this conceptual framework as the ISB's conceptual framework. Now, the conceptual framework is really all highly examinable. You know, this is something you need to understand as a pillar, as a pillar, especially in financial reporting. So it is highly examinable in undergraduate, postgraduate, and also professional courses. So this is something you should understand clearly and later on it will help you also earn some good marks in your final exam. Now, when it comes to the conceptual framework, the conceptual framework is a theory like I've told you that is there to guide accountants on how, on how to prepare or present uh, financial reports. You know, for example, we have in the different uh, different places in the world every organization is doing accounting okay now since every organization is doing accounting this board comes up with a certain procedure you know the standards so it ensures that the standards are the same however much uh, everything that they're doing might be different but now there's an harmonization uh, by the standards so that's why when you go to any other parts of the world, anywhere, you find out that these people are doing a lot of accounting, but still they are following the same standards. So, the conceptual framework is a bit broad, and uh, it really takes some. It really needs to take some time to understand it. Now, I'm going to look at uh, the purposes, uh, the purpose of the conceptual framework, uh, the items that are being involved in the conceptual framework, which are about seven. I'm going to mention them. We are going to look at the components of the financial statements. We are going to look at the elements of the financial statements, etc., etc., as we shall see. So, the conceptual framework, it needs you to, as I'm going to give it to you here, there's nothing much that will change. So, it's, your role is all about understand and reproduce it in the paper. So, let us look at the purpose. the general or purposes of the conceptual framework. Now, there is something I would like you to know when it comes to the purposes of the conceptual framework. When they ask you a question, for example, give us maybe four purposes of the general of the conceptual framework. Now, this is one thing you should know when you're answering such a number. The very first point you say assists. Okay. The second point you say assists. The third point you say assists. So that means the conceptual framework is there to assist. Okay. So when I talk about assisting, it means it's not the leader necessarily, no, but it's there to act like an assistant to the leader. So now, if the leader is IAS, IFRS, you know, the International Financial Reporting Standards, uh, or the International Accounting Standards, this one is there to assist the leaders, you know. So it assists those, uh, it assists the uh, IFRS to achieve its goals. So this one is there to assist now. Everything that we are going to give you here, or anything that comes with purpose, it starts with assist. Therefore, we are going to see how it assists. Eh? So just understand that that whenever they ask you 
of the purposes of the conceptual framework, the very first thing that you should take into your mind is that it assists. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, explain this, but because of the length of the uh, of the purposes, I'm, I'm going to under the conceptual framework. I might not write them down, so I'm going to project them on your screen so that you can have an understanding of them. Now, I'll just be explaining as I project on the screen. All right. So, purposes of the conceptual framework. So they are saying it assists the ISB in the development of future accounting standards and in its review of existing accounting standards. So, the conceptual framework is there to assist the International Accounting Standards Board in development of future accounting standards and reviewing those which are existent. So that means they look at those accounting standards which are there, are they relevant, okay? It has, they make a review of them, okay? Then later on they see whether they should develop more other accounting standards. So now, that one comes out because of the help of the conceptual framework. All right. Then the next point they are saying they assist the ISB by providing a basis for reducing the number of alternative accounting treatments. Now, look at this. They are saying that it assists the ISB uh, in creating a basis for reducing the number of accounting treatments. Sometimes we might have quite a number of accounting treatments. For example, we have the International Accounting Standard 2, the IS2. We used to have so many ways of you know, calculating for inventory. We used to have the FIFO, first in, first out, LIFO, last in, first out. Uh, we used to have simple average, weighted average. But you see, now the LIFO was scrapped off. Okay, now this one came up because of the, uh, of the conceptual framework. So it was scrapped off and now there's a limitation when it comes to IS2. So now it means that one also creates a basis for comparability. Because for example, if they say organizations are using maybe FIFO. So you find out that very many organizations are using FIFO. So it can cause a bit uh, of comparability within these firms. Okay. So that's one other point. Then another point says, assists national setting bodies in developing national standards. It assists national setting bodies uh, in developing national standards. Now, when it comes to this, we are looking at the countries, okay? So the countries, for example, different nations, they have different bodies. For example, in Uganda, we have the ISPAO, the Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants, Uganda. We can also have uh, chartered accountants, Kenya, Nigeria, UK, whatsoever. These are regional bodies. These are national bodies. So now, the ISB or the conceptual framework is that assist national bodies in setting national standards. It assists the national setting bodies with national standards and setting national standards. So that's another point you're supposed to see. Now, there's something I'm going to show you as a way of understanding this. So the next point says, assists accountants to apply relevant accounting standards in preparing financial statements and in dealing with topics that do not form the subject of international accounting standards. They're saying it assists accountants to apply relevant accounting standards in preparing financial statements. Now, the conceptual framework is going to help accountants, of course, to apply the required standards, the necessary standards as when they are preparing the financial statements, okay? So it helps accountants to understand the standard they should apply, because it's one thing for you to just prepare financial statements without a standard. But then, like I said, this is a guide. So as you are preparing the financial statements, you understand which standard you're supposed to use, which standard you ought to use. Now that's the accountants. Then the next point says, assist accountants in forming opinion as to whether financial statements conform with relevant accounting standards. Now, remember at the end of the day, especially when it comes to the auditors, after us auditing the financial statements, we are required to give an opinion of the financial statements. Now, 
through the conceptual framework, we understand that we come to know that whether these uh, whether these financial statements were prepared uh, according to the right standards, and then we shall give an opinion because it's not only enough for you to audit, but after you auditing, you're supposed to give an opinion of the financial statements. So therefore, it means that through the conceptual framework, this is going to help us, the accountants and the auditors as well, to give an opinion of the financial statements of the business. All right. Then the next says, assist users of financial statements in interpreting the information contained in financial statements prepared in conformity with the international accounting standards now of course now we understand that when these financial statements are being given out we have users of financial statements so it's one thing for you to prepare the financial st statements and another thing for the users to understand these financial statements of course the accountant is going to prepare them but we have the various users as we're going to, to see in our videos uh, like the lenders, the investors, the management. It's another thing for them to understand the financial statements. So this conceptual framework is there to help the users of the accounting information to understand, okay, to understand the financial statements which have been prepared. Now, look at this. If you check back in our, how I've listed them, the first one, it was to assist the board, of course, the ISB, just to assist the board in, uh, uh, in, in developing new standards eh, and reviewing those which are existing. Then the next one was also to help the board in creating a basis for the reducing or for the reduction of the accounting treatments. So that means the board, we have two points concerning the board, okay? I'm just giving some scenario whereby you can easily memorize this thing that I'm giving you. So that means the very first point was about the board. The next point was also about the board. Okay. Then the next point was about the national body. Remember, we talked about uh, the conceptual framework assisting the national setting bodies with national standards. Okay. So that means the national body comes in here. Okay. Then the next we saw accountants coming in. Okay, to see that they prepare financial statements uh, according to the relevant standards. Then also still we saw that it helps accountants to give an opinion on the financial statements. So that means it helps accountants, accountants, twice. All right. Then later on we saw the last group was the users. So it helps them once. So it helps the users to understand the financial statements which have been uh, presented, then it helps accountants in giving an opinion, it helps accountants in uh, making sure that they prepare the financial statements in accordance with the relevant accounting standards, it assists the national uh, body in setting national standards, and also the ISB in one, in reviewing and developing future accounting standards, and also in regulating or creating a basis for the reduction of accounting treatments. That's what they call the purpose of the conceptual framework. That's how easy it is. It's not complicated, it's easy. So I just created the basis for you to understand how it goes. And uh, I believe now it's very, very understandable. So that's what they call the purposes of the conceptual framework. So we are done with the purposes of the conceptual framework. Now, allow me to talk about something we call components of financial statements. Now, some people tend to confuse the components of financial statements with the elements of financial statements. These two things are different. So sometimes they, when they ask the elements of financial statements, some students prefer giving components of financial statements, yet these things are different. So, when it comes to the components of the financial statements, the conceptual framework says that we are supposed to start them with the word statement. So, the very first one is what they call a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive 
comprehensive incomes. Okay, that's the first one. Then the next one is what we call a statement of financial position. Then the third is what we call a statement of changes in equity. Then we have the statement of cash flows. And lastly, we have notes to financial statements. Notes to financial statements. Now, when you can, you can see this, this is a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive incomes. Now, look at this. It's not a profit, it's not a statement of profit and loss. No, it's a statement of profit or loss because in a business, you cannot make a profit and loss at the same time. You either don't make a profit or a loss and other comprehensive incomes. So that means don't put your hand. So this one is really what it is to call the income statement. So the income statement, they used to call the income statement. Now, this one here is there to establish the profitability of the business. That's why at the end of it all, you're supposed to establish what they call the net profit. So you calculate this and you come up with what they call the net profit. Then the statement of financial position is what they used to call the balance sheet. Now, the balance sheet also it looks, as, it looks at the financial performance of the business, the financial performance of the business. And also, it looks at uh, how the business has been performing and also the profitability of the business as well. Now, the financial position here, of course, is, it makes up from, it comes from the accounting equation. If you remember, our assets equals to liabilities plus owners equity. So this is what they call the, the statement of financial position. So this is it. Then the statement of changes in equity looks at how money is coming in as capital and how money is living in. You get? So it looks at how the equity section, money is moving within the equity section. Then the statement of cash flows looks at the, in, the cash inflows and outflows, how cash is moving in the business and out of the business. Then this one goes to financial statements. This one are just the explanations to the financial statements. So this is what they call the components of the financial statements. Now, I'll look later on in my other videos, I'm going to look at elements of financial statements. And I guess by the time I look at them, you will see the difference. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. This is Kevin Davis Accounting. Until we meet again, it's a bye for now.